Okay, Rin, why we're back. We're back <laughs> and full audio is, is going on this Version time. two. Yeah, version two. Take two, so everyone's everyone should be picked up, everyone should be heard. Uh, so thanks, thanks if you watched uh, the first 20 minutes of me basically talking to myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, we're talking about the Warsaw War Masters event on the weekend, uh, joined by Evan, as usual, and Andy, who's uh, Andy, who won the, the first pod, and, uh, and by Chris Dacker, who's uh, one of one of the fine gents in behind the wheel at, uh, at Warsaw. Uh, so we'll just be talking about um, stuff you missed. Go back and look at the, the stream. We'll do a separate one actually about the venue and about the club um, in the next couple of weeks. So I really want to shout out about them but we'll 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 dive straight in with uh andy telling us about his lists which no one here apart from us on discord so andy tell us about your lists buddy <laughs> sorry okay i'll i'll give you an abridged version then um so yeah so, so i was playing crucible guard uh, it was my first opportunity to try out the new uh newish um updated cid models yeah. um in, in a live event so i um I painted up a few of the new newer releases, like the Fail Experiments and the Containment Operatives. Uh, so I went with Silvestro in Prima Materia, uh, which was a couple of indicators, Suppressor, Liberator and Vanguard, plus a Railless, so quite quite Jack Construct heavy. Uh, various solos, but then also I tried the, the, the Fail Experiments and the Containment Operatives in that Silvestro yeah. list. Uh, and then the, I paired that with a Lucas list, which I actually just went with a... Uh, a magnum opus list just um just just try with like m more dudes rather than because i've got Silvestro in that uh, primary material list i wanted to balance that off yeah so i had lucas lucas with the assault troopers cgi unit uh thamrite archon uh, various solos and then a, a smaller jack package of vindicator suppressor liberator and double retaliators just for some oil based shooting yeah that's nice yeah the, the, the so that was me the tweaks to like the jacks and the like just the the repair thing for the theme i think you've uh, yeah. really done like the whole faction just just taking them up like an entire notch i think it's been really cool they do they they add a hell of a lot to it yeah yeah it's really nice it, to see. It, it's good i mean on, on the flip side on the balance side of it they've got uh, crucible guard jacks are still really squishy so if you get hold of them sort of 11 18s will just disappear yeah but it's it just ups the ante if you don't completely take them off the table then they'll have the systems back and yeah. you'll get one more at least one more turn out of them before they then finally fall over the next turn so yeah it's it's, it's definitely definitely better a lot yeah. better yeah it's really, cool. it's really cool what was um what was the thoughts behind like the them as a pair um like what was the why why those particular lists um I said because I, I just finished painting up the, oh, yeah, the, the painted side what? and winter yeah so, well so, so so that that then dropped them where do they fit best and to me that is with the semester yeah. and that's the semester list i've sort of built and then so with that point i then said well what would complement that so i went well, I've, got, I've got a small hard hitting list with the semester i'll go a bit more a bit more volume so i went back to magnum opus took some cgi um took some retaliators for the oil based shooting and uh and, and went from there that's cool that's cool and and as we said <laughs> before the stream ended uh, you you were a good person and you didn't take any death archons. Correct. So let's talk about my lists quickly. <laughs> so <laughs> my, my I'll tell you my thoughts first. My thoughts were I've got I've got a whole convergence army that I bought during lockdown <laughs> that I've never put on that I've only put on the table like a couple of practice games at club and I've got like you know the the auroras. I've got the the angels. I've got everything. Everything that's gonna get changed. So I've got tessellators. Um, so I wanted to like play the stuff that I I've been playing uh, on War Table and give it give it a proper go before the changes come in. Uh, and then and then after that, I want to be able to to basically compare it and say like, right, is is this still a good list? Because because like people's um, like gut reaction and like their their hot takes right uh are a little bit like well just because a point has gone up here and some tweaks have happened is that enough to actually stop you playing the list like some people will just like throw throw a list and throw a caster in the bin like if it loses like a war jack point we've, we've seen that in the past right so i wanted to to have have that baseline have that scientific baseline 
I, I'm, I'm convincing myself here. Yeah. So I could. I'm sorry. Did you really just tell me I brought the Death Star cards? I did it for science. For science, man. For science. Yeah. You did it with a straight face, man. I am. Well, as as Chris, as Chris will attest, LARPing teaches you to lie a lot. Absolutely. My God, you've laughed a lot. Oh yeah, I have. I have laughed. I laughed for like 20, 25 years. So yeah, I was good at it. So my list to her. So in in convergence of mercenaries. Um, so both lists are strange bedfellows. So Aurora one, uh, it's my my first list with a uh, uh, colliery, two conservators, which are the shield guard, um, vengeance jacks, uh, a diffuser for extra threat extension because you know they don't. Because it's not fast enough. enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I want to, I want to see if I could get some work out of it to basically see if it was actually going to be a viable thing to slot into lists after the change. So that was kind of a bit of testing. And um, then Hermit, Hypatia, two Death Archons, two Steel Soul Protectors um, for uh, some more Shield Guards. So there's four Shield Guards in total, two of them which have got defensive strikes and are Weapon Masters. Uh, the Frustrum Locust, um, uh, one lot of Accretion Servitors here with the, the Repair Bots. Uh, they've got Strip as well, so you get a point of damage to a Jack. But mainly they, they repair and they have three solos for two points that can trigger vengeance, can repair nearly all of my stuff, uh, and be contesting and scoring. Yeah, that's that's points well spent. Yeah, they're, they're really good for him. Uh, and and um, and strange bedfellows um, gives you an extra point in repair. So if you repair for one point, you repair for two. So it just just adds a little bit of extra synergy. Okay. Um, then gas before with uh, a shrike, and then three lots of negation angels and two units of optifex directive, who are the uh, the mechanic. The living mechanics, so they've got. Uh, they can give you magical weapons, pathfinder, and and have repair actions. But crucially, yeah, it's basically two units of three-man um, living models to stick in the list to feed Death Archons, uh, Vengeance, and corpses. Um, I, I'm still grossly disappointed that the strange bedfellows that never made canker worm a staple. Like yeah, just for just, the cool points, just, just, just the do, cool fact. It doesn't go far enough. I think that was that's always the problem. I know, I know, uh, ADs and stuff. Yeah. When, when it comes down, when when the rest of your army goes like six or seven inches further than he does in a turn, yeah. You know, and stealth yeah. just doesn't do for him yeah, what it needs to. Stealth just isn't good enough anymore. I think stealth needs a bit of a rework. I would say. Uh, uh, so so I paired Aurora yeah. one with Aurora two. So Aurora, the Aurora two list was my my main, and Aurora one was only going to get dropped. With the Death Archons, if if I really thought that I could get a ga- like a good game, um, so Aurora Two is like my flex list, which is Aurora Two with a Colliery, a Nomad, three Tessellators, Hypatia, two Void Archons, Frustrum Locus, Accretion Services again, the Algorithmic Dispersion Optifex, um, Gatsby with a Shrike, and three lots of Negation Angels, and also two lots of Clockwork Angels, and Optifex Directive again. Um, I was trying to get five tessellators, but I couldn't couldn't get hold of enough tessellators to play the five tessellators. Um, so Optimus Directive ended up in the list as a like a a last minute tweak, um, which made which was like a flex choice to to make a much better game into Menoth, for instance. So yeah. te- tessellators obviously a fantastic at shooting, but don't have magic guns. So it was like a, well, I can make sure all three tessellators. Can have magic guns if I'm going to men off. I don't have to worry about. So, easy peasy. That's the that's the list I have played a lot of, um, or, or very close to. And then the Aurora one list I've like put on the table once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, it was un- unlikely I was going to play it, but uh, there there was there was the hope there that I'd get to to shine some death archons before they went. Um. So yeah. So let's go and talk about some games, I guess. So if we. Uh, Go through um, in like a bit of detail, um, and then if you've had a particularly interesting game, Andy, like you know, just uh, feel free to, to to give us more more juicy info. So the first um, uh, the first scenario was spread the net. Uh, so uh, who who did you play, and how did it go, Andy? So I got drawn against Reese Darville. Um, I haven't played him before. Um, he was he was playing Legion. Uh, he had an Animag, Prim- <clears throat> Animag Primal Terrors list and a Lilith 3. I can't remember the theme, but it was Lilith 3. Yeah. Um, so I thought 
I couldn't risk dropping Lucas. I didn't fancy running a cloud wall into Legion, and I didn't think Lucas would like getting shot. So I went with uh, with Silvestro, thinking worst case he can super super cloud, um, and and also he's just natively immune to fire and uh, corrosion, which seemed good into seems Legion. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, uh, and also gave me the opportunity to tr- see what the uh, the failed experiments like against some Ogren. So his he, he chose Animag, um, uh- which. In, interesting side notes. Uh, Primal Terrors gets completely shut down by cloud walls. I know everyone's used to not dropping clouds into Legion, but Primal Terrors gets wrecked by cloud walls. Yeah, it, it, I, I was kind of, from, from my perspective, I couldn't risk Lilith 3 into Lucas. Right. Yeah, yeah like that's if, fair. If, yeah, if, if you were rather, to... rather, than trying to, rather than trying to win harder, I just tried to avoid losing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was this the I think I saw a, I think I saw a picture of this list was this old school primal terrors it was warmongers and war spears I didn't see any chosen correct there was no bright bringer no chosen so it was it was all the foot foot ogres so there was two yeah two units of wars uh, oh yes and there was Golab and an angel and an angelius that's the one yeah yeah right and and, and the usual couple of hellmouth units yeah oh. of course so I was so I thought that's okay. I you know fancy trading failed experiments into uh, into into Ogren, See how that goes. Yeah. I was a bit concerned by the Hellmouths because obviously I've got quite a few Jacks which can get dragged here then everywhere. Um, so I chose the side of the board where there was a house, so I could angle so that you know so things wouldn't get dragged. They'd, they'd hit houses. So I could, I could contest my zone or score my zones with Jacks and not run the risk of getting you still not give away everything. Them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but in the end, actually, I rolled very, uh, well, quite, quite luckily, on on the um, on the initial shots into the Hellmouths because there wasn't actually that much cover for him to, to hide them away. They were out in the open, so the, the I used the power up token on the on the railless and dropped one at the bottom of one, and then I took the other Hellmouth off on the top of two, with with a vindicator shot. So that really really helped. So. That allowed me to a just, well obviously they just disappear but rather than having to position to not get dragged anywhere I can immediately switch into just killing Ogren so I was able to sort of switch over from dealing with that wave one dealt with that really quickly and, and just getting stuck into wave two of all the, all the slightly slower Ogren um, I also out threatened him in terms of obviously I've got more shooting and the the, the failed experiments are quite quick if they need to be mm-hmm. um, whereas he's slogging along so I, I was able to sort of dictate the terms a bit of that. Um, he moved up, and then I had I, I featured with Sylvester, which was the science important feat. I went just had a really efficient turn of just killing as much of the front line, just shooting off a lot of a lot. Yeah, of just, just shooting off yeah a lot of dudes, and then obviously triggering vengeance, and then the second wave coming in. But that, I'd, I'd weakened, I'd broken the back of those yeah those those main uh, main line combat units quite quite early on. So um, I, I was able to weather that storm, and then and then push that one through. So. It's quite high scoring, so it was. I did have to stand away from him and just let him sort of slowly walk towards me. So I think it ended up like thirteen eight or something on the CPs. It was. Yeah. We, we, were, we were both scoring our own our own sides. Right. Um, just wrapped wrapped that one up. So no, it was it was a good game. It was a tough tough game to start with. That's cool. Cool. Um. So my uh, first round. I sound... oh, go, go on. Sorry. I mean, oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, it, it sounds like a slightly more modern list would have done a little, been quite harder to deal with. With the speed of Chosen and with the support of a Blightbringer. Yes. Did, yeah, he, get, did he get well, much use out of the flying heavies? Uh, what happened? I think the Angel committed into some failed experiments and maybe killed well, one. That's not going to do well. No. Uh, so, yeah, I lost two, revived one back, and then sent in a load up indicator. And... Oh, that's a rough trade. That's rough. <laughs> yeah, 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 so that was yeah. And Go- Golab was doing some hitting and running. He, he was. I was having to position away from him, obviously, with his um, in, yeah, the no healing entropic force aura. Yeah, the well, yeah. even worse than that, he's uh, he RFPs as well, so that yeah, kills yeah. your revive. Yeah. So, okay, so, interesting. I was having to watch him sort of quite carefully where, where he was uh, lurking. Yeah. 
Right, so my first game was against um, Alex Bond, who was uh, a lovely American who's um, who's just moved over to uh, to UK. Um, he was playing Menoth. I think his pairing was Resnick and Cyrenia. Um, I was a little bit more worried about the Cyrenia list, but he dropped Resnick. Um, and we had like a oh. um, uh, a forest which, in like the which center. Which Resnick? Uh, Resnick on the the chariot. Um, the the big oh. the big boy, uh, although his feet's really good against um, like angels because it just re removes all of the light armor stuff basically trivially. As soon as he manages to get nice. one kill, obviously he has the explosion of um, a fire just just kills anything that's close by. It's like a four inch um, AOE and it's not blast damage; it's just flat power fourteens. So it's just auto oh, yeah. auto delete. So that's that's kind of good for, for him. But um, he had. Uh, so he was running in um, War is the Old Faith, so he had a Victor uh, with a Choir, um, two Manic Archons, a uh, max unit of Avengers, and then one of the one of the mounted Paladins. I'm not sure if it was a Draken, um, uh, which he put on, had on the left flank with Victor and a, and the Manic Archon. And then he had uh, like Gravis, Villamon, and some, some other Paladin sort of guys. Um, and one unit of initiates, um, and uh, I won the roll and chose to go first. Uh, at which point I was like halfway up the board. He had, apart from I think Victor was his only uh, ranged like options. Um, so Victor was on his on my left flank, uh, and on my first turn I basically just ran up, made sure I was outside of range. Um, maybe he could set some stuff on fire if he had lucky scatters, but wouldn't be killing anything because of um, um, uh, essential commands and no blast damage. Um, and he kind of stayed in the, in the same formation he deployed in essentially. So the the vengeance were on the right with all of the paladins around them. Um, Resnick was in the middle with uh, the initiates, and then yeah, I said the um, the victor was slightly on the left, um, uh, and then flanked by. A very wide uh, Menet Archon and uh, and uh, and uh, Cap Solo, so he he runs up. So my second turn, I basically just move in a diagonal manner across the board. So I just put everything um, into his Avengers and the Menet Archon on the right to kill the entire unit. Um, so I, I start with the the Frustrum Locust goes up and shoots off. Um, uh, where is his, his spell is that gives him vengeance and I think it gives him plus armor as well. Um, so I shoot that off with the frustrum locust and then yeah, basically my angels and everyone and the the tessellators just 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 turn head head across the board in Daniel Manor and kill all the vengers, kill the men at archon. But I had to commit a lot more than I expected to kill the archon. I just 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 didn't get good rolls. <laughs> Um, so I left. From there. I left Gravis alive, full of souls, and I think like two of the um, two of the paladins, or maybe what was it, one, one or two paladins, basically <laughs> behind them. Um, uh, in the middle, I killed all but one of the initiates, and then on the left, I just left everyone alone, parked one of my servitors on my flag in in some rubble, and some some people. Like vaguely around it that I didn't care about, uh, but yeah, essentially I, I shifted my army across. Um, his it's like counter punch, which was his feet turn. Um, was essentially on the left. He got to kill um, like some mechanics on the left and contest my flag. I'm not sure. If, yeah, or you contest it. Um, and that's all you got to do on the left. On the right hand side. Um, between Gravis and Resnick and the Paladins actually killed like a decent amount of angels just because obviously as soon as they killed one angel they exploded and killed any angel within four within like the, the four inch so killed, uh, yeah. killed an okay amount of angels but I'd held Gatsby back I'd held the Nomad back oh, sorry, no, the Nomad had gone forward um, to try and finish off the, um, the Archon but I'd held Gatsby back behind so he was like completely safe um and then we had a couple of stone and mortar stance um, paladins go and try and block, or at least make sure that um, if the nomad was going anyway, he's going to get free struck if he was going to leave. Um, and, um, and surprisingly, Resnick came up the board 
um, all the way up into um, to a tessellator, uh, wrecks a tessellator, but basically sort of backed off to the edge of the, the circle zone in the middle. Um, I think it was like camping three, but I was like, my my entire army can now get to you. Um, oh, so, right. So, Jesus. Yeah, so, so it was a bad little, time. Yeah, I was a little bit. Oh, like, that's horrible. If if he'd had like Madeline, maybe with some with parlay up, maybe that wasn't a bad decision. But otherwise, I was a bit like, oh, there's a lot of stuff that can get to you. And Gatsby was the first one that went in, and the last one that went in. That's enough. Yeah, did didn't yeah. <laughs> did didn't need anything else. Gatsby just went over on his own and just killed him, just just wrecked him. Um, so that was my first game. Um, Gatsby showing showing you definitely worth the points. <laughs> so yeah, that was cool. <laughs> um, Chris, how did because how did, it was in that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, how do you think the first round went then, Chris? You, you obviously you got to see uh, a lot more games. Got to wander around the the hall. Yeah, I did. And uh, I mean, uh, touched upon this a little earlier, but yeah, so very, very, very briefly, like the format was, everyone got paired up against someone, uh, and then based on where you uh, came in that in that first round, uh, you were paired into like a top pod, top eight. Um, middle pod, and then the uh, then the uh, you know the the third pod yeah. uh, of eight players, and oh. then everyone got you know three games after. Yeah, um, oh, I, I scored two CPs on my game. I should say, yeah, basically. Okay, there you go. That, yeah. that, I'm guessing that's that's <laughs> where I uh, where my submarine sort of happened. It's my well, this this is it. Points. You had you had you had Andy farming CPs, and then you had you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, fix, fix, yeah, just just go and kill Happy instead. <laughs> I tell you what, it's it's really interesting actually because um, I commented to Jacob, who's um, the, the other lad who is helping me r- run the event. Um, I commented after the first round. It's it's really weird because number one, I think there was probably one, maybe two assassinations across the entire twelve games first round, yeah. and no one clocked. So pretty much everything else just went to scenario play, um, which maybe maybe was people were actually thinking, look, I need to try and get some CPs here to get into the top pod. Who knows? Yeah. But. Um, but it was interesting because I, I, I'll be honest, I thought first round and it was one of the first tournaments people were back, people would be really rusty and people would just be clocking left, right and centre. But that, that didn't really happen through most of the tourney, I'd say. I, I, was, I, was, I was definitely worried about it because I've, I've been playing Grimkin for like the last, I don't know how long. So I've not actually played <laughs> any convergence since basically I stopped playing um, on yeah. one table as much. Um, and obviously the convergence list... Uh, a fiddly and like there's lots of moving parts and then on the table you're basically like lifting like wings out and then trying to put them in better positions it's um it's not the the, the nicest game for you to play because you're basically like trying not to knock over your models constantly but, uh, what are you saying Andy? Actually, actually um spread the net was was probably quite a good choice for that first round so yeah lots of scoring points on the board yeah, it, it, and it encourages quite spread out play. So, yeah. I don't know if that was deliberate or not, but it's, you know, I, I guess you, I, I can imagine you getting quite a wide range of scenario uh, CPs. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to say it was intentional, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not that clever. It worked out. It worked out. We'll then. talk a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk maybe about the mix of the um, of the scenarios anyway that we picked through the course of the day, but. Um, no, I thought I thought it was I thought it was interesting the way it shook out. Like I say, but um, yeah, pick people were obviously more on point with the clocks than I uh, than I expected. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so so Andy ended up in uh, pod A. So and I and I ended up in pod B. Um, and then uh, we moved on to Recon Two, which is the second game. Um, so uh, what yeah. did you what did you see, Andy? What was it? What was the Shark Tank like? Uh, so I drew Gavroth. Uh, to start with, um, Gav's a good guy. So Gav, one, of, one of my locals is just just coming back to the game. I was about to say, yes, yeah, so a regular Mark II player took a break at the start of Mark III and, yep. and sort of dipping his toe back in. Well, he was playing a little bit before uh, the pandemic, um, and, and then yeah, so just just back coming back again. From, uh, from so he had the wolf pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so he had uh, his scorn. Uh, so he's a Xerxes two list and a Zal Immortals list. Um, so looking at those, I wanted the hitting power that I got from Silvestro. And, and also with Scorn, quite a few upkeeps and uh, analyzing kicking around, so the yeah. purification in the back pocket was, was quite handy. That, that's an interesting um, concept. You don't feel that Lucas brings enough hitting power? 
uh, also I was more used with uh, Silvestro. I hadn't, I literally hadn't played that Lucas list be before. Ah, <laughs> right, okay. Uh, I was thinking uh, with disintegration and his crazy focus pool, like Lucas doesn't struggle to kill things. I, I agree, but it's, I, I wasn't sure about shooting scorn. I'm not saying he can't shoot the scorn down. Yeah. It's like, you're right. There is the hitting power there, but could I make it work against you know scorn immortals at armor 25 or, or armor 22 so or whatever? I suppose especially, especially it's also a problem when he's got uh, what's it called? Arcane um, vortex. That's not arcane vortex. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that, okay, yeah, so, uh, well, fair yeah. enough. So I went with Silvestro, he chose Zal. Um, his Zal list was two units of Immortals, one Supreme Guardian and a Mammoth, and, and various support bits and pieces. Um, so on Recon 2, as you might imagine, the Mammoth angling towards one zone. Um, uh, there was a, a Kriya. A Kriya? Agonizer. Agonizer uh, as well. Um, so the, uh, the Mammoth was angling for one zone, Supreme Guardian for the other, Immortals just running around being annoying um he goes first uh so he obviously goes far as far forward as he can um he I, i've moved up and had a, the odd pot shot but trying not to trigger vengeance um don't want to give him any extra distance so he then feats um what would be two yeah top of two um so i've i've, I've used my uh, containment operatives to uh just to put at the corrosion on one unit so they're obviously run forward um in, in quite clumped up so the, the containment operatives i was really impressed with those throughout the whole day they're, they're eight points for three one wound models but they are i think they're really good 14 inch range arcing fire yeah three different shot, three different shot types pretty nice. and they are pretty good um and the, the, so the power 12 three inch aoe cause a point of corrosion so Power 12 against armor 22, I think the Immortals are. Yeah. The point on, on feet, uh, all it needs, so so. I, I'll take the gamble that I'm not going to trigger Vengeance. Uh, and instead, I was putting sort of two or three corrosion points out on, on the Immortals each uh, each shot. That's really good. Um, so, at the start of his next turn, he lost five or six Immortals just to corrosion. Was that, that was quite cheeky. Um, so, he, so, so, I've shaved off again the front ranks. He's charged in. Um, in, into a vanguard, uh, which has obviously got set defence, so and quite high armour anyway. So he did a bit of a mess on, on the vanguard, but didn't finish it off. Um, and, and then that then enables Silvestro. He's got he's got his targets in range. Silvestro then feats and just works way through through the rest of the units. Um, I, I've had I, I basically have gutted all the immortal units at this point. So I corroded five or six the previous turn or on, on his turn. Um, my next turn, his his fleet's long gone, so I'm just I'm just murdering immortals left, right, and centre. Yeah, doing a big, doing a big chunk of damage to the Supreme Guardian, trying to avoid the mammoth. Don't want to speed that up. Um, make, making a lot of mess. I think Gavin Gav realizes he's lost a fair bit on, on attrition. Um, I've I've killed loads of immortals, so he's got all the souls he wants. Um, uh, so on Zal. Yeah. Uh, I make a mistake at. So my, this on my feet turn this turn three i was being greedy and i again this is probably me being rusty and not reading zal's card properly i went for so i did a free revive on a failed experiment um and i paid for a revive as well um ordinarily i'd think i'd have a super cloud just as a default because that's what yeah. you do with Sylvester. but i thought well that's okay there's a forest just in front of him i walk up to the forest stand behind the forest <laughs> so i can miss, use i, you miss I can use right? Uh, yeah, may, yeah, may have missed Mage Sight. So uh, I'll just do one, revive one extra failed experiment, and that will set me up for the long game. That'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, goes over to Gav, and he's like looking at the table, thinking, "Well, I've lost too much here, so I may as well go for the assassination." I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> what, I've asked you. There's, there's, def there's definitely no uh, art nodes on the table. I've made sure of that. So where's the assassination? And I went, "Oh," uh, and then he points out Mage Sight, and it's like, <laughs> oh. so, Bound to rise. I should have. So I got shot by the mammoth, and Zal had I don't know how much focus, uh, how much fury, but lots. So he should have definitely killed me. I was going to be camping too. He just couldn't roll. Boosted, boosted tens and elevens, uh, and then when he did hit me, the, the, the damage was was pretty poor, and I somehow lived on. I had one focus left and about five boxes left. Yeah, uh, and he'd spent uh, out Zal. He spent all of Zal's fury just on the assassination run. So we basically called it there because my, my next turn I had a, a Zal right in front of me. Um, yeah. 
with, with an army ready to ready to kill him. But uh, I, I, I absolutely should have lost the uh, lost the game there. Lucas has I mean, he's surprisingly hard to assassinate. Like Sylvester. Oh, sorry, it was the Sylvester. No, never mind. Yeah. He should have been dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> But like you guys seem to have like quite a decent length game as well, didn't you? Yes, I think. I mean, as Gav's coming back into it, um, yeah. I, so he was maybe sort of thinking things through. And I obviously, you have to approach that immortal list in, in the right way and unpick yeah. the right things in the right order. Yeah, you don't want to give them some free three inches or speed up the mammoth. So I, I was probably taking my time as well. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Cool. Um, we had we had. Um, we have our lunch after the first round or the second round? I can't remember. Um, it was after the first one. It was after, after the first, the first round. yeah. So, quickly, before I go through my second round, the, the lunch there was like, was really top notch. I don't, I don't know what you had, Andy. I had like uh, the the 820 burger or whatever it was, like a barbecue burger. But it was like, it was like proper, like high quality pub food, basically, I'd say. It was the. Yeah, way yeah, no, I, it. I, it like really I had some tacos. It. Yeah. I had some tacos. They were very good as well. Yep. Yeah, I was super impressed. Like, and and yeah, Chris, you, you like the value. I think for the event, Get, getting like a, a one day, uh, four four games out, and having like a really nice meal and a couple of drinks with it as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely definitely worth the ticket price, mate. So thanks for yeah, no for worries. Sort out, sort out some good deals there. Well, we'll be doing them again. Don't worry. Yeah, We've got another one cool. coming up. That's cool. That's very cool. So my second game was against. I think uh, well, it was against a guy called Tez, who I think is like one of the one of the locals for you, uh, Chris. He is one of our locals. Yeah, so, he's been there. He's been so he's there playing, a while. playing Menoth, um, but told me at the start of the game how um, Convergence is his, his other faction. Um, so I was like, okay, so you know what all of my stuff does, and he's like, yep, yeah, that's cool. I was like, right, sweet, this is going to be interesting. Um, he had Amon and Cyrenia, and dropped Amon. Again, I was more worried about you Cyrenia. Keep you keep dodging Cyrenia somehow. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I have here. no idea. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think Cyrenia is probably like the best Menoth cast at the moment, I'd say. So I'm fine with... I, like, don't, think you, I don't think you're going out on the limb with that one. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm quite happy that I got Amon. Um, Space has got Amon with... Um, I think it was like three Crusaders, two... Uh, indicters, Crusaders and dervishes. Yeah, yeah. Th no, three, three crusaders, two indicters, and then I think three dervishes as well. And then, right. Um, yeah, basically like support. So some vassals and choir, that sort of thing. Um, um, I, I went first. Um, check my stick, my short cross sheet. Uh, so I went first and just ran up the table. And he, we, we, we talked about how uh, he had quiet, and I was like, "Oh, so that's cool." I've got, um, so I went, I went, I dropped a roll or two, I should say. Um, I said, uh, "Yeah, how I had uh, the the optics directive." So, you know, if if he does, uh, basically to not catch him out. So I was like, "Yeah, if you if you do, um, if you do say no shooting, these guys can can obviously can hand out magic weapons to the tessellators. They can still shoot." You. He's like, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I know, and that's why that's why we talked about how he he played convergence as other faction. Um, so he kind of ran forward, really far. Um, he ran the choir, so they just didn't do anything, um, and basically put everything kind of spaced out, but in front of me. Um, and there was no, um, there was no like uh, nothing from the vassals. You know, he didn't have any any enliven. So it's a bit like, it does does he think? That the indicters can just chin like whatever I can throw into them. Um, so it's a little bit like, okay, this is, this is interesting. See, like in, in my head, I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I now smash into his army and, and do an awful lot of hurt. So I move up. Uh, oh, he's got um, uh, an armor buff on the one indicter. So I move up with the Frustrum Locus. The ever it always starts in the frustrum locus who shoots off the armor buff um and then uh, and then aurora goes i feet and yeah i destroy uh, two crusaders both indict uh, so two crusaders an indicter and all the dervishes um and then i basically engage the rest of his army um so essentially uh, aurora sat back untouchable uh, like way too far back for anyone to, to, to do anything to her 
and uh, yeah, take out like all of his jacks. He was he was pretty pretty upset that how hard, how fast <laughs> how fast I went <laughs> and how hard I hit him. And I was a little bit like, oh. we, we did talk about how you've got conversions. And he's like he's like, oh yeah, bro, I don't play this bullshit. And I was like I was like, oh, he's, I think uh, I hope I'm not doing him a disservice. Here, yeah. But I think I think Tez is is very similar to me in that. Um, you 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 read stuff and you'll think, oh yeah, I've got that. I understand how that works yeah. now. But until you've seen it on the table, it just doesn't. The jigsaw puzzle doesn't fit together. Yeah, I and think... I mean we yeah we haven't got anyone locally who plays convergence like that. I mean he's he's played around with it a little bit, played a bit of Synthirian. Yeah. I've filled it around with Synthirian. So well, we're not we're not taking it particularly seriously. I'd say. Yeah, I got yeah. You have to walk in. You have to walk into the teeth of it once to really yeah. understand. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's one of those. It's the same for a lot of things. You know, like Kruger too. You know, you, you don't quite appreciate it. Like a bunch of the Merc casters, I think, are the same. Absolutely. Where, where and you go, you go. His, his feet stops me moving towards the table edge. What? Yeah, and then and then yeah. you see it on the table, and they're like, "Oh, you just won on scenario." Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they so just like, Peter turn two and scenarios over. Yeah, yeah. it's like, like the first time that, you get caught by Gordon. See, yeah. similar deal. You yes, just go, "Oh exactly. shit, that's what it does." Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, the game the game wrapped up pretty pretty easily from there. He basically said he wants Amon to go and kill Gatsby as like a a revenge killing. <laughs> so. Essentially, yeah. just, just spent his turn uh, making a charge lane for Amon to get to Gatsby. Um, knocked him down with uh, his star attack um, to, to not let him dodge out of the way. And then, yeah, just, just killed Gatsby from, from full to zero and was happy with his life and then just passed it over to me. Um, so, Good lad. Uh, Fair play. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was, that was interesting. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, a rude awakening. But I think I got the impression after we spoke like after the game that yeah he like like Chris said he was uh, you know playing around with a lot of like the more traditional the older style convergence um yeah so not not really seeing the the angels on the table to see just how far they go um so yeah, that's my second game so I scored a bit a bit more of a reasonable I got eight control points at that time so a little bit more of a reasonable score to make up for my uh my lack of it in the first game um and then we went on to invasion as the third game um, um, I'll, I'll go through mine before Andy because mine's not going to take long. Uh, I played a Convergence Mirror match um, against Tom. Uh, he had Lucant and Aurora One. Um, uh, very much so with like a very similar like uh, list where he's like um, leaning on the the medium based infantry instead of angels. Um, so I dropped Aurora Two. He dropped Lucant. Um, he went first, uh, ran up the table, uh, I ran up, um, his second turn, he basically just runs further towards me, so past the half line, halfway line for a bunch of models, feats, and has d up. up. Um, my turn, I basically just look at the amount of armor, and I'm like, uh, so obviously he's got, he's got the, the medium base infantry, so he's got the, the guys with the the daggers but also have shields so they they go they go eradicate yeah so the eradicators yeah. go into shield mode so they have plus two armor and then they have plus four armor from the feet and then they have plus two armor from d-cell <laughs> so i'm like can i shoot any of this stuff down before or have i got to rely on getting to melee and the answer was i have to get into melee and even then it's not looking great so i i, I dicked around a bit at the start of the, the turn Realized that I wasn't gonna, I was just gonna bounce off his armor. Uh, he's got um, eradicators and then the, the the proper shield wall unit behind them on the right hand side. He's got uh, eradicators on the, he's got eradicators yeah. on the left hand zone, and then he's got basically um, a couple of negators who have been run off Gatsby um, centrally, uh, and some conservators on Lucant just in the, in the middle zone. Uh, and I'm like, right, okay. I'm not going to get much done, so this is what I'm going to do. Is I use my tessellators as just slam bots. So my three tests. So Aurora went first to give myself um, uh, repo, uh, repo five, and uh, dodge. And the first tessellator goes in, um, slams into the first um, perforator, and locks it into the perforator behind. Then repos out of the way because there's no one in melee with it anymore. The next tessellator does the same to the next guy down the line. So basically I knocked down all but one of the unit and the only guy that's still left 
stood up is, is round the corner of the building. So I'm like, right, so the Tessellators basically are out of threat range for anything to retaliate, and I've just knocked the guys down and said, like, next turn, you can stand up. Con- congrats. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, my friend, is what we call lateral thinking. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, That's it's actually very cool. Basically, it's very like, nicely I done. It's like, I can, I can commit hard and go into melee and maybe do, like, a, some damage, but I can't do enough, so... And, and there's so many... He had so many guys, and he had a bunch of... Um, Oh, help me, Chris! What are they the, uh, the the things that bring them back? The little, the little. Oh, creep, in the Enigma Foundries, the, the little creepy, yeah. creepy praying uh, things. Um, so on the right hand, so basically, I'm like right. So my my left hand zone is this this he's in there, I'm in there, no one's scoring. It's fine. Um, on the right hand side, I stick a bunch of Clockwork Angels, um, just just literally run them to get in the way and. The, the furthest back Clockwork Angel is within five of one of my voids. So I'm going to collect the souls when he kills the voids and when he kills the angels. And if he clears out the zone entirely, he'll be triggering vengeance as well for my void arc on the right. So that's my plan there. Uh, and, and all my negation angels are basically in like this big semicircle at the front of my army, out of range for anything to hit them. Um, and in the middle, uh, Gatsby just goes up, sticks some clouds in front of his jacks, and I basically just park and go right. You can't. None of you guys can see me. We'll, we'll be coming for you next turn. Um, so his next turn, yeah, he stands stands up uh, and can basically all but clears the right hand zone, but doesn't kill the guy that triggers vengeance. Um, but takes takes the, the zone. But I'm still contesting it, so fine there. Um, and basically just like shuffles around in the middle um, a little bit. Lucan comes into the zone. Um, there's a wall um, just in front of the uh, conservator that's in front of him, uh, and one of the conservators goes to the right. So basically, he's, he kind of skews a bit more towards the right. His guys are all knocked down, stand up, and shuffle, and aren't very happy. Um, and it goes back to me. Um, so currently, we have three dead clockwork angels, and I take my turn, and I'm like, you've moved your shield guards and your other jacks because obviously uh, Lucan gives them uh, all his all his back group um, shield guard I'm like he's moving mm-hmm. everyone apart from one conservator away from Lucant. I'm just going to kill Lucant. there's so much to chew through and we're playing this like proper um, cagey game of positioning and rather than like throwing things into each other I'm like at this point I'm like well I could just get Aurora Confeet I'll use suppression initiative to give everything dual attack at which point uh, she'd go up and put a shot in, put a spray in, and then the tessellators can can basically go up into melee with the, the perforators that have just stood back up and be within nine of Aurora, uh, nine of um, Lucant, and basically shoot. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's what I did. So the first one went in, um, and I was just like, you can have your free strikes as once, once they're empty of focus, they'll just repo back over the building. And it doesn't matter if you free strike and hit them or not. And, um, and yeah, three Tesselators, that's all it took. Just uh, killed, uh, killed Lucant. So I it's only killed Lucant, and he'd only killed three Clockwork Angels. It was uh, not, a, not a very high scoring game. <laughs> but um, I think I remember seeing the score sheet coming over, and I went, oh, what yeah, happened? Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> you, I was, you were there for quite some time. Yeah, I was z- 0 10, 0 control points, 10 army points, and he was 0 0. Because uh, <laughs> it wasn't a complete unit of angels he'd killed. Um, so yeah, it was it was interesting. I, I found it really interesting because it was like a proper puzzle of, of how I can stop him after feet turn from from just rolling over me, um, and how I could just go right. I, I, you know, there's so much of his army that I've got to try and get into. Like I can't possibly kill all of it in my feet turn just because of landing spaces and stuff. So so I went for the I went for the easy way out basically of uh, why, why play the next half an hour if I can just. You know, focus on killing one guy. That's what I did. Yay. I've also been playing King of Nothing a lot recently, and it, it can't get it out of my head. So, <laughs> I'm like I'm like in assassination mode apparently. So Andy, how did how did your your third game go? Uh, so this was Invasion. I should have said. I'm not sure I did at the start, but yeah, no, indeed. So I got drawn against Graham, who's uh, another Crucible Guard player. Graham so he's keen. Graham Keane, yeah. Um, so 
it's a bit of a head scratch on the list pairing process because he has a Lucas and a Gearhart list and I have a Lucas and a Silvestro list. So it's like I'm trying to work through who picks what, why, how should it work out and so on. So, zags. Well, so I couldn't work out. So my Silvestro list, I think, um, so Silvestro is say, safe from, or safer from Lucas because of his, his super cloud. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure the army survives against either Lucas disintegrating stuff or Gearhard shooting it. Um, so I went with Lucas, thinking, okay, so if I, so, I'm taking Lucas. If he drops Gearhard, I can maybe assassinate Gearhard. Or if he drops Lucas, then it's a, a Lucas off, and it's a fifty-fifty. Mm-hmm. Um, he chooses Gearhart. Uh, I choose choose Lucas, as I said, um, but I've quickly realised. As we're deploying, this is this is a, a mistake because, as I said earlier, my Lucas list is my Magnum Opus list. So I've got CGI on foot. I've got assault troopers. Um, his Gearhard list is he's got a Vulcan, a Vindicator, uh, a Retaliator, a CGI unit, and obviously his CGI. I've got Snipe and 3D6 to hit, yeah. which is slightly better than my 12-inch guys with 2D6 to hit. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I've got, I've got my Thamorite Arc on. That you know, he, he can do some good work. I can see through any. Well, he doesn't have any clouds, but um, I, I can start. If I kill one, I'll kill. A, uh, he can a death drive in advance and kill another yeah. CGI. And if I get lucky, the D three whilst it's still a D three shot before the dynamic update, then um, I can get some, maybe get some good work done. So effect. that's where, that's where Lucas puts his clouds. Uh, Lucas Lucas hides. Uh, sorry, tactically positions behind a forest. Yes. <laughs> um, to allow him to put his clouds up in front of um, uh, the liberator, which is my, sorry, my liberator, which is obviously threatening Gearheart if, he, if he's just doing anything too exciting. Um, uh, also, my Thamorite Archon and well, I'm hiding behind there, uh, my, my retaliator. Yeah. Um, and then my CGI is just having to like play way back in the backfield and just just try and stay out of walk and shoot range, walk and snipe to shoot range from his CGI, which is which is pretty, quite, pretty quite, legit. Quite 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 goes, yeah. yeah, and on on, on my left hand side, I've got my um, my assault troopers facing off a bit, effectively against his Vulcan. So I my spread my assault troopers right out, um, thinking, okay, yes, he can drop and remove some immunities, but if I spread out enough, he can only maybe drop one. And, and just just try and make make it as hard as hard as possible, really. So uh, I've advanced up behind my sort of mini cloud wall with with, with my, the three pieces I just talked about. Um, despite having two retaliators in my own list, I completely space on the fact that he has a retaliator who can walk up, remove my two clouds. Um, the the vindicator gets the eye of sight anyway. Uh, I lose my thermite arc on in one shot. Just 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 gone. <sighs> Uh, the retaliator removes the other two clouds, and then the CGI start opening up on the liberator. Uh, he, I don't know, he does. He's got twenty six boxes, so he's done, he's done like sort of twenty odd boxes. He's, he's pretty knackered. Mm. I've only got one mechanic in the list who, for some reason, I put him in a forest, and he hasn't got a pathfinder, so he's slowly <laughs> running slowly out of the forest. The... Yeah, yeah. Um, so after that turn, I'm thinking, right, this isn't. You know, I'm, I'm going to lose my. Um, my liberator, my, my one threat, my one long range threat onto onto Gearhard. This game isn't going very well. How, how am I going to sort of find my way out of this one? Um, so he, he he uses Vulcan on the on the other side to to advance up and is sort of shooting down some some assault troops. I think I'd lost a couple by then. Yeah. Um, he's he's been quite aggressive to to get of, of the rocket pod. He, he chooses the shot type which removes immunities. So the rocket pod will land on one and and can uh, and get within 10 inches of the spray to start killing it. Uh, but he's moved up far enough to get a five inch aura onto another one as well. So he's, so he's been quite aggressive with the Vulcan. Um, so his invasion is quite a slow scoring scenario. So I thought, well, if I can actually go some CPs ahead and just just try and, yes, I'm going to get shot, but if I can get shot slowly or just just not like dying ride quickly. It, ride it out, sort of thing. Ride it out, and, and just get a couple of CP points ahead and mm. just contest very, you know, just one a turn. Um, uh, but that, that, that at the time seemed to be my best option. Mm. So Lucas actually feated just to put a disintegrate at 15 inch, or just to get the extra range amplifier to get the 15 inch range on the Vulcan. So, so Lucas was able to just nudge around 
a little bit on um, on the on the forest. Get the Vulcan within fifteen. I then rust it as well, so I've now got an armor fifteen Vulcan. Yeah. Uh, TK a couple of things to get them into charge range, and basically I drop the Vulcan from full health with a Hutchuck, two charging assault troopers, and my Vindicator shot. Nice. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, char charging power to our weapon masters off the assault troopers with with the backswing with the second attack. If you yeah, hit that's four. a really nice addition for them. And a, a dice off threes, you know, you got four dice off uh, at minus three, then three dice off at minus three. Is mm. they're, they're just a, a single assault trooper doing some chunky damage. Yeah. Um, the, the the vindication did some, you know, softened it up a bit. Um, the assault uh, the the suppressor which had rusted it did a bit. His second spray did some fire damage as well. So so yeah. So basically, I just focus fired on the Vulcan, drop that scored the zone because all the assault troopers are charged in so they now own that circle zone and i blew up his objective so i've gone two up on scenario taken off the vulcan which is obviously good um and and basically trying to threaten on scenario yeah. um the assault, the assault troopers being quite you know, a bit more immune to the to the shooting with the, the carapace so I, th I think this move probably flusters graham a little bit because he, he, he then steps up with baldwin uh, yeah with baldwin to um to do a bit more work and get a bit more in range mm. himself because he, he wants snipe left on the cgi so baldwin's getting within the 13 inches for his uh, shadow buying gun um and also he, he doesn't finish off the liberator just so just, he'd, he'd nail it down to about six or seven boxes the previous turn mm. i've finally got my mechanic up next to it and started repairing the boxes because obviously this is magnum opus so i'm not getting a, a free repair yeah. so until i so mm. I get my, my, my one model which can heal him um, I, I, that liberator's out of action, but so I finally get that liberator back, um, and Gearhard has stepped up. So after his next turn of shooting more CGI and, and, and doing whatever damage, I'm thinking right, I'm just going to go for this because um, Gearhard's close enough in range. So I was able to TK him. My Gorman moved up and blinded him as well. In, in fact, sorry, I did the blind first because it was basically it was a shot to nothing. If the blind lands and he's minus four defense, then I think the rest is is is, is, get, is a go. Yeah. Um, so, so a blind, blind Gearheart, um, TK him and turn him round. My, my second retaliator walks off, hits him three times in melee, um, shoots him a couple of times with some CGI, and, and basically just and drop Gearheart. Um, and I just, uh, I, I think the game swung on that me taking that Vulcan, and I think that kind of just made you make uh, bad decisions just to try. Yeah, and get just back maybe, in. yeah, maybe, yeah. And, and I think, as I said, because it was invasion and it was a slow scenario going 2-0 up when there's only well I mean he can take out my objective but then there's only three scenario points uh, three scenario areas left available for him to score in yeah I, I think that that 2-0 was, was quite helpful so um, I managed to see out that with an, with an assassination that's cool now well done nice but uh, lessons learned Gearheart, uh, Lucas isn't going into a list without two liberators going forward uh, <laughs> one one was too uh, yeah it's, it's too fragile that, that sounds like Evan's uh, sort of Form of uh, list building, Evans. Uh, you've been running how many? How many foreboders with Agathon? Oh yeah, yeah. I've been running three because I'm a coward. <laughs> <laughs> just like just if, if, if it's such a strong element of your caster, yeah, you you want to be able to to make sure you you get to, to I, leverage I it. I cannot tell you how many times I've played with two and people just go out of their way to kill one. Like if you know it's a four point foreboder, people will spend a twelve point Arknard to kill it and. It's worth it because suddenly it's such a big amount of threat off the table. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, same with Lucas. Yeah, cool. Um, and then, uh, and then we go into the the, the final game. Uh, so it's on split decision. Um, I get to play against um, Barry, uh, who is is, Bar is Barry like the the head UK judge, right? Pretty much. Is, is yeah. that official? Pretty much these days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's top, as top official top. as it gets. Yeah. So uh, so Barry's running trolls, running. Madrak 1 and Madrak 3. Um, he drops Madrak 3 with an awful lot of dudes. It's like two lots of two max units of Fen Blades of the UA, uh, unit Creel Warriors, um, uh, Champs, Pyatrol, a Basher, I think. Like a bunch of a bunch of solos as well, like Kithkar. Um so it's a yes. lot of a lot of dudes that Madrak can, can tune up into Weapon Masters. Uh, and I've dropped a lot of dudes into two death archons, yeah. and I've dropped Aurora <laughs> one with the death archons. So That's Barry, weird. Barry, kind of like oh. said said afterwards that he kind of tried to bait me into it because obviously void archons have. Oh, so it's so a Madrax feet, uh, Madrax three's feet. If you haven't played against him, 
is he gives uh, so first of all he casts solid ground to make everything immune to knock down and then he feats and says everyone's got four up tough and if you pass your tough check you make a three inch advance immune to three strikes so when you've got oh, like that's 40, 40 dudes <laughs> who can t- you can make into weapon masters um, bon appetit. And you've got no, uh, <laughs> and you've got no um, entropic aura because you left your void archons at home. It's like uh, maybe this wasn't the right choice, but I was like, oh. I wanted, I wanted to play them the event once, or once in the event, so I did. So we started with I, I'd had the game with uh, with Barry in, I think I can't remember if it was the VTC or one of one of the online leagues. Um, uh, I dropped my Aurora two list into his. Uh, I'm not sure what Trollcaster was playing. And I think he was playing Horgle too. Oh yeah, Horgle too. Yeah. And, I, <laughs> yeah. and I think I killed his like Glacier King with like three angels. Just, just that was oh, it. Gosh. Something, something ridiculous on my feet. Uh, he did didn't have the nicest of times. And then the rest of the game was him trying to score scenario points for me uh, by like. <laughs> destroying his own objective and killboxing himself, that sort of thing, to just end it quicker. So I wanted to have a nice game. So we started off by going to the bar. So I got a pint of Keeper of Secrets, which will be from the, the brewery you were on about. Um, I imagine... Pines brewery. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's all, all like uh, yep. gaming reference um, names on the drinks. And uh, Barry had a, a mead. And we sat down at the table and we set off. So Barry won the roll and went first. Obviously. And, and just yeah, this, this, this sea of fen blades just runs across the table, one on each side, uh, on each flank, and then the the, the Kree warriors in the middle and the champs basically behind because he doesn't want I mean, we to actually hit the champs, but I don't think he cares about anyone else in the army at the start. <laughs> I've got to uh, say just quickly, those fen blades in that list are scary. They've been giving me nightmares for the past few weeks. So yes, do you know how they, far they threaten in that list? So they threaten like thirteen really? before vengeance. nineteen nine. 19 inches including the feet and vengeance yeah. what and they yeah. hit the mat 9 power 12 weapon masters i think yeah, yeah they, they, oh, they, they're just they, ridiculous they go pretty far if you give them vengeance and they hit pretty hard yep. they, they, they yep. get they get <laughs> quite well and this and there's like 24 of them because they've both got the ua right <laughs> so there's 24 of them Amazing. and there's some champs behind and there's like various solos um so yeah so he, he runs across the board not quite across the halfway Mark um, and I basically run out and put everyone outside of range, apart from a couple of um, a couple of Office of X Directive, and then pass it over. And then as Barry starts to go, I go, I go wait a minute, have you got takedown in this team? It's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you're gonna like eat my Office of X Directive and not even have the courtesy to give me corpses for my Death Archon. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's what they're there for. How dare you? But he will, but he will give me vengeance. Um, so yeah, he, he he takes out, he kills the two um, that are within charge range because basically he's he's coming he's coming as deep as he possibly can anyway. Um, so basically, he parks he parks his entire army in front of me in this ginormous like just wall of, of troll flesh. Um, with uh, with Mandrak at the back, like perched behind the champions, that sort of thing. Um, he forgets the feet, but I'm like, you, you were feeting, so he's right, right. And he's like, yeah. he's, he's, like, he's like, I've made a mistake, Dan, as Barry does. So I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, it's fine, you can feed. <laughs> so it's like, so pretty obvious, <laughs> but you'd be pretty shit if you're. So, so I've got vengeance on my death arc on Hypatia. Um, a steel sword protector on the right. I think that was it. It might have been another model as well. It was either three or four models had had swift vengeance. Um, and uh, the conservator on the right had uh, whether it's called righteous vengeance or the plus two plus two. Um, so my my three or four vengeance attacks I make. All of them hit. All of them break armor. Only one of them kills a troll. And I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, hmm. This might be a problem <laughs> as basically he, these fen blades start does he at coming least, closer does and he at closer. Least as, uh, does feet attacks? Sorry? Does he at least miss the feet attacks? I don't know. So the, the, the feet, uh... so the feet is um, 4 plus tough and a movement. 
Um, she doesn't get to attack. Oh, it doesn't get to make an but, attack. Okay. But basically, but yeah, I, I make like three or four vengeance attacks and kill one troll, and the, the others basically oh. just, just just move closer in. So my conservator's not going anywhere, for instance. He's just like locked in. <laughs> by, and I'm like, I'm like, if even if I defeat this turn and throw my entire army into him. I could literally be still looking at like half to three quarters of his army if he rolls anywhere as good as he just rolled. So yeah, like, it's, it's could... all about those tough rolls. Yeah, and I'm like, this could be real bad. So I sat back. I I, I thought I said to him, I'm gonna take a minute and, and think about what I want to do with this turn because while, while I'm eyeing up Madrax, so Madrax at the back, <laughs> but obviously the Death Archon is vengeance forward, Hypatia is vengeance forward, and I'm like. I think I've got a crack at just killing Madrak. I think it's on three camp. And I'm like, I think I can kill Madrak. And um, he's like, really? It's like, it's like, am I not safe? And I'm like, I don't think you are safe. So we, we looked at it. Um, so all my angels apparate forward, basically as, as close to directly towards um, uh, Madrak as I can. Uh, Aurora does the same. I don't think Aurora operates slightly to the right because she, she's got a spot she wants to go in. I'm like, right. Um, so Aurora goes first. I, t I talk through the plan, which is Aurora goes first. And I think there's landing spots for three angels with the half inch reach um, just, just around Madrak. Um, and then there's room just to his left for Hypatia to land because she's got two inch reach. And there's room for me to land a Death Archon in front and to his right. Oof. Uh, oh, and 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 five inches, in, 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 within that five inches, uh, him it will be there somewhere. So I'm like, right. So I start, I start the plan. So um, so Aurora goes up basically, works out where everyone's base is going to be because obviously you could boost off Aurora with arcane might. Uh, so work out where everyone's base is going to be. Um, she feats, and then Hermit walks. Actually, she casts Aerogenesis and feats. That's a that's a job for the the turn for the, for the game really let's be honest um so Aurora, <laughs> so uh so hermit walks his seven inches uh, over the top of uh like the front line of the army uh casts master of ruin and then repose five over the next line so he's like now don't know, like four inches away from Madrak. and uh the negation angels go next or the, one of the units of negation angels go next um so all three of them land uh, I boost the, the first one, which hits him, so he's now paralysed, so death five. Um, I do, like, a chunk of damage, um, then transfers... I think transfers two, two of them, and then takes damage off the third. So he's already looking pretty ropey. At which point I start to look at it and go, oh, wait there. So as soon as one of these hits uh, forces a tough check, if he rolls four or more... He just walks three inches directly backwards towards his deployment, yeah. zone, and and it is off, and and it's off to a point where I, I put Aurora safe, so she's safe still, and I've only got so many models to commit. But also, I'm like, mm, I need to stop it. So I don't know why it took me it took me a while to like un unravel the problem, and and it shouldn't have taken me that long because the, the the answer was the. Um, the, the next unit of angels that run 16 inch just run over the top of Madrak and just park him base to base so he's got nowhere to go. <laughs> At which point Barry goes, shit, I hoped you didn't realise that and you didn't do that, so I did. Uh, and then the uh, yeah, the Death Archon went in next and just um, just chopped his head off. And that was it. And we had a nice mm. nice end to the, the event where I got to basically just like enjoy my pint and we got to watch other people play games for a bit because... Uh, because I went for the, I'm not relying on you not rolling all the tough checks in the world. <laughs> so I think I made the right choice. Because I, yeah, I, I do think, think you been, made the right choice. I think it could have been but miserable. I, I think to the... I mean, it's so much up to dice. Like I still think that's in your favour. Like there's only so many four plus toughs he can make. You're gonna make him take so many rolls. Yeah. But <laughs> but this way this way it's less of a gamble. Yeah, and it is a big gamble, right? And as soon as soon as it starts, as soon as like um the wrong trolls start to get their tough check, they just close ranks oh, and stop yeah. them from being able to land next to the next lot of trolls, for instance. I mean, to the uh, casual observer, I've walked out to the table when, when Dan, I think, first start, started contemplating the assassination run, and you just kind of look at the table and you go, 
Madrax, not quite in his kill box, but he's he's, he's not far. Sorry, being out of the kill box back, even. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was quite far back. And not only that, but he had like a wall of champs in front of him, which were in themselves surrounded by a wall of, of Creel Warriors. And then surrounded <laughs> themselves by this wall of Fem Blades. And he's there going, I think we can get it to him. I'm like, what the hell? Like, okay, whatever. Come <laughs> yeah, back Barry, later uh, on. Yeah, and he's Barry's just like, surrounded like, by angels. Yeah, Barry's What's like, what? <laughs> would, you, would you think he was safe if he was stood here? Because I'm not. <laughs> and he's like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you actually have to completely bubble wrap yourself into that. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah it's, it's rough, it's rough. But it, obviously, there's, there's plenty of ways to get around it, like, if he had... Yeah. So, it, there, there, was a, there was a forest uh, about, like, six inches to his left, he, and he could have literally been behind the forest and in completely and he... behind. Which, which yeah, he, he, he admitted just, it. He admitted it, didn't he? At one point, yeah, he just yeah. said, "Like, look, there's like, no need for him been, to be that far forward." Could have been yeah. sat behind this forest, touching his own flag, scoring, and done exact, and, and done exactly and the exactly same thing. Yeah, 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 basically caught everyone yeah. else. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that was that was my that was my last round. So that was uh, my my four and uh, which was cool. Um, Andy, what did what did your last round uh, end up as? How did you? Uh... Uh, I got I got drawn against Rob Rob McCormick. Uh, oh, All right. Okay. Long time Kador player. Yeah. Um, he was playing Zakova 2 and a second caster, which I've completely forgotten. Yeah, uh, he, he, he terrorized me with that Zakova 2. Strakov 1. Strakov 1, yeah, yeah. Strakov 1, that's the one. Yeah, he, he terrorized um, me at the Sherwood with that Strakov, uh, with the, uh, the Zakova list. Well, I, I looked at the, which is why I've forgotten his second caster. I saw Zakova <laughs> 2 and I thought, right, well, I can't play Lucas because she's spell immune. Mm. And Lucas is going to. Die very quickly to some uh, ponies. Uh, spell ponies. Um, so I guess I'll best play Silvestro then, because uh, at least Silvestro's got his super cloud and admonition. Yeah. So super cloud, you have to get within five to target him, and obviously if you're within five, you're going to trigger. Uh, well, admo. Give, give, give me the option to trigger admo, um, and then I can move to the other side of the cloud, or just three inches away, or yeah. something. Um, so I thought, well, that's my best defensive tech here, and so I'll have to go with that. Yeah, um, so yeah, so we've got Silvestro uh, versus uh, Zakova. We have an initial bit of skirmishing. I quickly realised my uh, railless is a bit rubbish because it's got two big 10-inch sprays, but they're both cold sprays. So that's... Um, so basically, it's running around with like the, the, the long range four inch OE shot and an eight inch spray. So, well, that's that's not very are, are good. The, are the turnians immune to cold as well? So, the ponies are right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, turnians the turnians are, are. So, yeah, so it's basically the jacks, I think, are the only and and like um, Iana and Holt are probably like the, the few things you can actually get with the sprays in the list, yeah, exactly. And I was, and also, yeah, I guess we should say his, his list was there was a couple of shooty shooting Kador jacks. Um, what are they called? It's got a decimator uh, and a devastator, I think. Oh, destroyer. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, one was definitely a destroyer, and yeah, yeah, decimator. That's right. Um, yeah. So, so, they, they, so, all, they all start with a D. That's yeah. just yeah. The yeah. Kado so, D jacks. So those those two are kind of like next to each other, fairly central, just threatening the middle of the board, um, opposite my my jack line. Um, He's got a, a unit of ponies on either flank, and then the Turnians milling, milling around the middle. Um, I've got the, the railless on one side with the, uh, the the failed experiments, and then a line of jacks across the, the rest of the board. Um, so I thought, well, I've got Sinestro behind, quite far back behind the wall. Which I know it's relevant against sprays, but it just it seemed like a good place to put him um, in his cloud with admonition up. It's about as safe as I'm going to get. Um, I do a little bit of skirmishing, pass it back over to Rob. Rob goes, right, well, I think I'm going to feet this turn. But I'm looking at the ball thinking, well, I don't think he's going to go... I don't see how he's going to quite get my caster here. Um, but he, he feeds for attrition, um, yeah. which I, I probably didn't see coming. I, I was pretty focused on it's the Cobra 2, therefore it must be assassination focus. Yeah. So it was like, oh, okay, that's a, a slight surprise. Uh, not, not an eyes in a surprising decision is more just I just didn't see it coming mm. um, so he steps up with all his Turnian um, Turnian units and puts all the various debuffs out um, the ponies come in and start doing their spraying um, so he's dropped the the railless armour by a 
by four, I think. Uh, one of the jacks, one of my one of my um, vending cases has got four off, four less armor. The other one's got two less armor. But I've I've put the vid, I've put them in a little triangle. So I've got the two vindicators and then the, the vanguard in the middle. Yeah. So the vanguard's got the, in this theme they've got the double shield guard ability. Um, so the ponies come in, do lots of crisscross spraying, get as many tar- multiple targets as they can. I end up losing the railless entirely from health for full health and lose one of the vindicators. But the other vindicator uh, is probably the one on minus two armor, not minus four. Um, is is still still around? Still got some health left. Yeah. Um, I think the big surprise for him was the failed experiments. So again, I've got transmutation up on the failed experiments. So the def, uh, def fifteen armor seventeen with an, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, armor fifty with uh, armor fifty with impervious. Yeah. Um, so with with the ponies with the, with the Zakova spell for the three d six to hit. In this instance, hitting them wasn't a problem. But then he's got power twelve cold sprays with one dice against armor fifteen. So he's not actually yeah. doing that much. And I've also got tough if he ever does get through that. So yeah. I think he was expecting just to completely gut the units. I, I think I lost one and like two, two or three wounds on, on a number of them. But that, yeah. that was it. Because each spray, he's lined up each spray to get, say, two, two yeah, failed experiments for yeah. each spray. Um, so I, I, I think that's... I've, I've got more failed experiments left than I think he was expecting. Um, and I, I've done the usual Sylvester trick of luring in the opponent without losing that much. And then, so my next turn is like, right, well, this is this is my attrition feat turn. Um, I've, I've feated for science importance, and I've I've killed. So what, one suppressor kills four ponies on on the right hand side between punching and sprays. Um, the failed experiments, well, I actually revive the one that he did kill. They all hyper regen, basically, pretty much back up to full. They all walk for mass eight. They go in and they just they just between the berserks and the two attacks they have each. They just kill all of the, the that unit on on the left hand side. Yeah. So he's, he's he's lost he's lost like nine ponies. The the containment operatives again. Um, this is a really useful unit. Just hang at the back, fourteen inch range, decent range, especially that you know, after the opponent's committed. Um, Aiming with signs of pawns against all these clustered up Grey Lordtonians, just just melt all this debuff guys, um, and, and and then and then I'm starting to repair my jacks because obviously I'm killing a lot of lot, lot, lot of models which have come into Sylvester's control control range. Yeah, and, and every time I kill, the, yeah, the every time I stuff, kill one, um, I get to heal D three. So yeah, the the the, uh, the failed experiments have regen themselves. The, the jacks that were damaged, in particular the, the heavily damaged Vindicator one, that is basically back up on full, and I've taken off pretty much everything bar like Ion and Holt and, and the, the, the two Kato, shooting Cato heavies and, and yeah. the odd the odd turn you left around. Um, so I think that was quite a big swing turn back in my favour. I kind of basically absorbed the punch, lost the rail as fine, but then just just took so much more back by by being at that by drawing him into that closer range. Um, and, and I kind of ground it out from there. So I think in the end, yeah, it was like eight two on CPs. I just he just ran out of stuff to contest, and I was I was able to start scoring. All right, cool, cool. So well, well, it, done, man. it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a tough, tough, tough yeah. game. It was, it, 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 it's, always, it's always quite hard. How much do you offer up? How much do you step forward into it? Yeah, um, I, I think it's really scary. This Rob, Rob played into it, me at Sherwood and killed three clocks on his feet turn. Um, at which point I was like. I'm not sure I can come back, and uh, I nearly did. I nearly did, but I didn't quite. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've definitely got a lot of respect for it. I think it's it's got like a lot of flexibility where I think if the if the you've got to be safe, like, and you've got to keep your caster 100 percent safe, or he does just kill you. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is why I chose Sylvester. Yeah. Um, I think from memory, or if, if I'm right, I think the Turnian debuffs the model debuffs. They're not model unit debuffs. So I think maybe. if he, if if, the, if one of those was able to drop like. I think if one of them was able to drop like minus two armor on all of the failed experiments or something, mm. then that would be a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah. But because they're single targets, I think nice. they went for the railless. Um, and, and I think in this mission, in this matchup, I don't think the railless was actually going to do that much anyway. W- with with the two big sprays just not not in play. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so it might be. You know, I don't know if Rob's faced the failed experiments before. Yeah, you know, they're a new unit, so maybe he hasn't faced them in Increasable Guard yet yeah. or not. So. 
because because that ability to walk between strength, armor, speed, they're just really flexible. We go, okay, right, I'm fighting yeah. high def, low armor guys. Right, I walk for, walk for the um, mats and I just munch through. Yeah, they're, they're, they're super cool. Like the models are uh, really lush. Yeah. Well. Like if I, I like how the how Chris Brigard have taken this like sideways sort of skew towards a little bit more like Resident Evil style of of science rather than uh, <laughs> yeah, where they've got these. these really? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was it was only there slightly in like the the the, the big Alice model yeah. and the trance. It's like kind of the, well those those failed experiment type models and so yes, see that theme buffed up slightly. It's, it's quite yeah. nice. Yeah, it's quite cool. So cool. So well, that's a, you. You won your pod. Um, I won my pod. I yeah, got, I went four notes. So uh, who, uh, Chris, Chris, run run through like how how you think the rest of it went. Who who won the uh, the spirit of Sturgis? I can't actually remember off the top of my head. Yeah, so um, so we had uh, as I said, we had uh, eight awards through the course of the day. So we had um, three first places, <laughs> three second places, um, best painted, and a spirit of Sturgis award, which went to the um, basically the sports person. Uh, that, that was award. voted uh, voted for by us, the players, wasn't it? it was like indeed, by them. by by their peers, yeah. and uh, it was awarded to Reese Darville, yeah. um, who um, who Andy played the first round, yeah. of course. Uh, absolutely stand up lad, lovely, lovely guy. Um, played some fun stuff, and uh, I was just there to have a good time. And um, everyone seemed to seem to enjoy the games with him. So uh, he took home the the, the top prize. Um, and then you, gents, of course, won uh, won your first places. Uh, Zilvinas um, won um, in the other pod, um, beating Ryan in the final. And I think uh, I think part of that was helped by the fact that someone was feeding Ryan a lot of beers <laughs> the final round. <laughs> that was that looked like an absolute grind fest. Men off the men off. Um, and uh, yeah, so it um, it all it all it all worked out really well. Rich Paget won the uh, best best painted award with uh, his absolutely beautiful um, yeah. Infernals list. He had an absolutely gorgeous Sloan list. Um, yeah, pa- Pagandi came uh, in. Pagandi's another old old uh, Mark II player. It's, uh, yeah, this is it. There's a, there's a few people coming in like that yeah. with um, you know a few, a few of the older players, the old guard. But yeah, Rich Rich um, Rich won that one. I think close. Close second and third, maybe even just tied second, was was Andy with his beautiful Crucible Guard army, yeah, cool. and um, and uh, Gavin Roth as well, who whose Scorn army was just yeah. just yeah, absolutely the, mint. Yeah, yeah his mammoth, mammoth, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, I, I was having so, yeah. a close look at uh, Rich's uh, his infernals at the, the lunchtime. They're very very nice. Stunning, aren't they? Um, yeah. So no, really, really good job. Um, I think he's in the process of painting the Omadamus list, is he? So I look look forward to seeing what that all looks like when he's uh, when he's all done yeah. with it. Um, but no, overall, t- tournament seemed to go very well. Lots of happy people at the end of it, and people came away with some nice prizes. Yeah, and you said uh, there's there's room for expansion. Obviously, we only had like half of the the gaming area, right? So yeah, big, this is bigger events I mean, we... in the future, hopefully. Absolutely. I mean, 20, 24 players to that one. I think we could quite easily double that. Um, we're talking about oh, team that's events. Fantastic. Yeah, we, we, we could double that space-wise, I think. We, we're talking about team events. Um, we've got a, just a very, very quick plug, we've got another tournament coming up on the 27th of November, which I believe Jamie and Barry are running. Um, no full details yet on that, on what that's going to be like, what kind of format. I think that's uh, that's under discussion, but um, we'll be looking to push for, for similar yeah, it's, sort of it's a nice way you, you oh, guys to, yeah. are set up to run as a club. So, like, you you get to play the next one. You and Jacob, who who ran this one, um, get to to sit down and play the next one. Uh, cause you've got Absolutely, enough, that's enough, a hope. You got enough players with enough experience, that you can like sort of shuffle around to, to make sure everyone has yeah. their their time to play, which is cool. Like, and just an, another another quick word on, um, if, you, if you don't mind, bud, really quick, on, was, uh, just a just a th- thank you as well for um, Paul Sheard who came down for the day and. It, it, prime example of like what the community is like and and you know how great people are paul turned out had the day free said he was going to come down on the off chance that we had a drop and then if not he said he'd just help out and he and he spent the day judging just walking about helping yeah. us and uh, you know doing some judging oh, which was um quite a long way away hasn't he so absolutely yeah, yeah but he, nice, he said nice he just well. out. still still playing and still enjoying stuff Cool. We're smashing it, yeah. smashing people with false here. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't think that's uh, going to change is, is, that much. Either. It is still ruthless. It is still <laughs> so ruthless. But but yeah, so yeah, oh. all in all, I'd say yeah, well done for for running the event, uh, Chris. You and you and um, you Jacob ran a really nice show. It's like we had uh, we had screens up with people's um, 
where, where people's tables were meant to be. Um, a nice, nice open, cool area. There was table service as well, constantly. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, so a, right. would you like another drink? Would you like some snacks? It was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I said to someone, I said someone after the first round, it's like a little bit like it reminds me of a, 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 another game in store, uh, like up, up maybe to the northwest. But with uh, with like yeah, maybe maybe like ten times the amount of class, <laughs> we're, we're rather, <laughs> rather than getting like you know a pint of ale thrown at you by the bar. Instead, it's like oh, would you like uh, a tipple of gin, sir, with uh, with your next uh, round? It was, uh, it was really nice. Tell you what, one one thing you may have missed is behind the bar. Not only have they got the meat and the beer, but they've also got potion bottles. Yeah. Um. So you can have like uh, cocktails in a potion bottle. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I was, I was saying as well, when we turned up, the the chef was basically just uh, just pulling out freshly made donuts out of the oven as well, and it was like, oh, this is yeah. this is a classy joint. This is nice. That's cool. Pretty mint. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's uh, that's that was, that was your uh, inaugural event, right? So that was the the Warsaw War Masters inaugural steamroller. So indeed, uh, and like I say, good. plenty more. Any more to come. When, when do you guys uh, play? If people want to come down and like play with you casually and stuff, what's the? Yeah, I mean, if, if people want to come down, um, Thursday night is our traditional gaming night. So um, just give us a shout. Feel free to bring us like a message people, on Facebook say, or Discord can find or whatever. You, they just do a search on Facebook and uh, and Dan's made your website. So it's warsaw.warmasters.uk if you want to check out the website. Yep. Um, so you'll find Absolutely. Some, oh, very nice. Some articles and uh, stuff about yeah, Dan, things coming up. Dan surprised me with that one. He just uh, he just turned around one of the days and went, uh, "I've made a website." I went, "Sorry," and he went, oh, "I made a website last night." Looked online and went, "Holy shit, this is fantastic!" <laughs> he's put some serious yeah. effort into this thing. Wow, he really has. Really good job. But there's a there's a few people doing articles for it. I think there'll be some articles following on from the tourney as well. People putting bar reps up and whatnot. So um, yeah, cool. look out for some content. That's good, cool to see. So yeah, so thanks very much, there, man. And, uh, and Andy, well done as well. For, that, that was my first win, by the way. I've, I've got, I've come second a bunch of times, and third. I've never actually won an event, so I was like, oh, oh so, I went, so I went straight to the bar with my uh, my winnings, and I bought a bottle of mead because because Zil- 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 good man picked the bottle of mead from the winners' table, and I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to go. And then <laughs> and then Gav Rofe was stood next to me, going, just go to the bar with the money you just won. I was like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I could do that. <laughs> so I did. Yeah, so I came over with a bottle of of the Nidogger <laughs> mead as well. She had a, a little tipple of the other night with the the wife. It's quite nice. It's proper smoky. I, I definitely on. need to make a pilgrimage there. And get a, <laughs> well, if nothing else, for a bottle of mead. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's a so, great so, move. So thanks, thanks Andy for joining us as well, talking about your game stuff. Thanks uh, Chris yeah, for, for talking Chris. about your your absolute fine, pleasure, fine ass event you ran, mate. And uh, yeah, hopefully. We'll be uh, seeing people soon. You got are you? Are you all doing the team event in Sherwood next month? I, I think yeah. I am. I it's next month. I'm pretty sure I am. Yep, yep. yep. I'll be right. there. We're bringing three teams down, so we will be about three teams. Uh, who you? Who are you playing oh, with, Andy? Yeah. Oh wow! Do you know what? I can't actually remember who who I'm playing on the team with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a team with someone. <laughs> I think, I think, I, I think I, I'm, I'm playing in, with... Uh, in the same boat, I'm not throwing any stones. I think I'm playing with Gav. <laughs> uh, Gav, uh, who, who uh, with the Scorn, and with Matt Oakley. So that, like the, the the old Wolfpack uh, sort of team. Um, so we'll, that, that'll be interesting. See some, uh, some old names oh, come nice. back. Um, yeah, so hopefully that if you, if you haven't uh, seen it, that's the, the Sherwood. Uh, so Sai is running a, a team event for the next one, three-man team event. German style. I'm not entirely sure what that means. <laughs> like we've discussed the pairing What's process, beer? and it's like oh, we'll, we'll come to it. It'll be fine. It's going to be pretty casual, I think. It'll be just like a good, a yeah. good weekend, definitely. Awesome. Um, but cool. Well, thanks very much though for joining us, and I'll, I'll love you and leave you. And uh, as, uh, I have puppies to take out. It's like you know, eleven o'clock. Perfect time to walk dogs. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for joining <laughs> us. Uh, don't forget if you are enjoying the content. <laughs> Go sorry, go, go on, on, go on, Evan. Oh, no, I was about to say, if you're doing something clandestine with puppies at 11 o'clock, this is more Cruella de Vil territory. Oh, no, no, it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> There's, like, nothing in my village to do, so I can walk, I can walk, like, <laughs> two minutes, and I'm now in farms, farmland, so uh, I'm not going to not gonna get up to much, much mischief. Um, but, so, yeah, if, you, if you're enjoying the content, thanks for watching this. Um, 
come and join the chat and uh, yeah, follow, like, subscribe, and feed like the social media monsters. It's all uh, all appreciated. And uh, with that, I love you. Awesome. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks all.